What's up guys? In today's video, I am going to walk you through how to build your own MCP servers in N8N. We start off with the server trigger and we could add any number of tools you want to your trigger. Okay, let's walk through it with a simple example. I built this to-do list. Breaking it down real quick, these two MCP servers, one for interacting with my to-do list in Google Sheets and one for my to-do list in Airtable. Just to demonstrate, you can build whatever you want for these MCP servers by adding any number of tools to the trigger node here, right? Taking a look at my two spreadsheets, here is my to-do list in Google Sheets and my to-do list in Airtable. Let's talk about how this actually works. So I've set up a very simple AI agent with a tool that is calling that MCP server. In my to-do list tool, I named this tool to-do list, I have the endpoint for my MCP server. I'll be using the Airtable one for this demo just to explain it out, but you can see we can set all kinds of things up in the exact same way. So for the Airtable MCP server here, I have my two URLs, just like if you were to use a webhook in N8N, and I can grab the production URL, set the path, you don't have to set a path, but just creating authentication and paths is good practice for security if you wanna take this to an actual production level. So you can choose authentication, set that up and create a custom path here. So copy my URL, I'll jump outside of this node, come back into my to-do list tool here. By the way, if you wanna create that tool, you can just create a new tool in any AI node that allows tool use. And we have the MCP client tool right here. So I'm going to click back into my to-do list and paste my production URL right there. There it is. I want to include all tools, that is all the tools in the server. Click outside of the node. Now, when I interact with this agent, it's going to make one tool call. All right, now the difference is here. I'll just grab my agent, slide it over here so we can take a look. We could simply set up this agent to run all of these tools and it would behave in the exact same way. The way this is set up now is this agent is going to make one tool call. That tool is going to call this and the server can then decide how to interact with each of the tools. So the way we set up the MCP server is pretty much exactly the same. We would set up a regular tool call in an agent to use all of these tools. Now, why would we wanna do this? Why don't we just set up the regular tools inside of the AI agent and leave it at that? For one, it cleans it up, right? When you have really complex agents that can do multiple things, you wanna have these really compact tools. For example, this is a simple to-do list, but to run this to-do list, it's actually going to take all of these tools. And we can just condense the tool calls in the AI agent itself. So this MCP node is connecting to the server and functionally would behave the same as connecting all of these tools directly to the agent. The second reason this is pretty awesome is because now we have this to-do list MCP server built, I could then call my to-do list in any other agent that I want to use and not have to rebuild every single one of these nodes. It's already built one time. I can just make that call to the to-do list in any other agent that I want and it's already set up for me. Definitely speeds up your workflow in building stuff if you're repeating lots of the same operations in multiple agents. What's great about this too is we can, same as before, make calls to sub workflows. If you're not familiar with calling to sub workflows, essentially we can grab the AI agent, add a tool here and call an N8N workflow tool. This is a special tool node that will trigger the executed by another workflow trigger. Likewise, we can use an HTTP node here. For example, I can just connect these nodes up just like that as separate tools. And if we connect an HTTP node request here, we can obviously do all kinds of HTTP requests, but we can trigger an N8N webhook to run a sub workflow. What we can do with calling sub workflows is initiating new workflows to run from the AI agent. Similarly, we can do that 
in our MCP server. I'll slide my agent down and here we have the same MCP servers, but with the call and it and workflow tools, right? So now when I interact with this agent, it will call the MCP client tool that will trigger my MCP server and that server can then trigger sub workflows. Now for the simple Airtable to-do list example, it might call a sub workflow, something like this, where it'll get executed and run through multiple nodes for my to-do list. If I wanna add any AI generation or anything I want to implement into my to-do list, for example. I'll slide down even more just to demonstrate how that works. I've set up the HTTP request nodes to actually call these sub workflows. And the fact that I'm using HTTP nodes instead of the call any and workflow nodes is simply that I can keep all of my workflows in one canvas space using webhooks and the HTTP nodes. I'll just demo this out real quick just to show you how all this is actually working. So I'll interact with my agent. The agent will decide which tools to use and how to use them. In this case, there's only one calling my to-do list MCP server. That's going to jump straight over here and have access to all of these tools. My insert task tool is an HTTP request that will call this node, trigger the webhook and run down this chain to create a new task. My HTTP node to update my task will trigger this webhook and run down this chain to update my task. Okay, I'm running through this pretty quick. Don't need to worry about all of this making sense. Getting started with building your own MCP servers is understanding it's a very simple connection, calling this tool and jumping to your MCP server. That is the main leap we need to make, understanding this connection right here. Whatever you add in here is up to your workflow, is up to your creativity, how you're designing your servers for your own use cases. But again, making that connection, it's very simple to call your own MCP servers. So let's just test this out real quick. I'll actually interact with my chat bot. Let me just make sure I have the correct endpoint here. So I'm going to change this to demo, copy that production URL, copy it, jump back into my MCP client tool, my to-do list and paste that endpoint right there. I'll click outside of the node and we can interact with the chat bot. Get my to-do list. Now this will trigger and run the agent, made the call to the to-do list. If we go and check the executions real quick, you can see we got that to-do list back. If we check the executions, you'll see which operation ran through my MCP server. Great, so this was the triggering execution in the agent. Then since the workflow is active, that ran my MCP server. That connected up to my server, went to the appropriate tool to search my tasks. Back in the chat, let's take a look. We've got my three tasks right here, teach MCP, eat, and go outside. If I check my to-do list, we can see we have those three items just like that. So jumping back into the chat, we can see something like check off task one. Now, before I send that off, let's jump into Airtable. Let's check the status here. Task number one, status is not started. I'll send that off in NADN. Check off task one. The agent will run that, call the MCP server. That MCP server calls this HTTP node. That triggers this webhook and runs down this automation chain. We got that back. Teach MCP has been marked completed. Jump into Airtable and there it is. So using these tools to call more complex automations in the sub workflows using HTTP or the call n 8 n workflow tool. Pretty cool stuff when you really dive into building out your MCP servers. Again, the real magic here is being able to connect to your same MCP server, no matter what workflow you have built, that server is already established and ready to plug into your agents. Even this open AI node to get tools, this open AI message a model node now has access to manipulate my to-do list. Cool, so I hope that walkthrough overview has enlightened you on how to build your MCP servers. I have the link to my school community in the description of this video. If you wanna jump into the community, I'll have this demo workflow up for download. You can take a look at how I structured everything and the prompts to get this one functioning. Then you can, of course, reverse engineer from there into your own workflows. So I look forward to seeing you in the group and I'll see you in the next video.